In Papua New Guinea, a tradition that is significant and that is at the heart of Fiji culture is the Bilung tradition. So when you say Bilum, you know it's woman because Bilum was taken from the womb of the woman. It's derived from there. Bilum is a woman thing. And Bilum is woven by a woman. The fiber is twisted by the woman. Everything it's woman. The designs are created by the woman. So when you talk about Bilum, it's, it's a woman thing. There's designs that tell the story about women also that is in there. It talks about the weaver or the community. You can know uh, which belongs to the Goroka people, which, which belongs to Hagen people, which belongs to the Upper Highlands people, which is a Morobe Bilum, which is a Medeng Bilum. It's basically the brand that, that tells which community owns this design. This is the ovary, or the fetus, or I mean like the ovary design. Some say fallopian tube, some say ovary. It, it's to do with the women's womb. It was believed to be created in the maternity ward of Gorka General Base Hospital uh, by nurses there. It, caused a lot of talk within the town and then the police went around getting scissors and started cutting out the billums saying that why do you have to design the woman's uh, you know private parts outside uh, and you know being a woman at the womb it's a, it's a sacred place the police went around and they started confiscating the billums and then they ended up at the police station and then um, they came to a weaver and they asked the weaver like why did you do that billum and the weaver said that no it's not the fetus and she started saying that it's the letter D so she she had to put out the letter D to identify it and she was like she justified the design there but then she had to tell them like you're not gonna cut my billum it's my billum it's the letter D billum the weavers got very frightened they didn't want to do this design then they said that okay now when, if we're not allowed to create the DD design or the fallopian tube design then we will create the computer design so they named it computer some Gorka weavers got up and they said okay we're going to do the Geisy design so they call this the Geisy it started from DD, I mean the fetus, the fallopian tube, then it developed into the computer, then it developed into the Geisy. So that's how nobody wanted to weave it again. So you rarely see the fetus set design anymore because they're afraid, they are afraid to do, do that. It's called diamond because it represents women. And women in, uh, in the highlands and let's say all of Papua New Guinea, women are treasured because we, we get bright price out of women. They are valuable to us. That's why it's called diamond. So the diamond design is it's basically a traditional design. It, it differentiates the women, the younger girls, from the married women. For example, if my daughter just became a young woman, just past the puberty stages, now we put her in the little house Mary, and then we keep her away so she doesn't come closer to the man or come to closer to the father and the mother or the family. So it's the mother that goes there and feed them and the aunties. During the whole week, people go sing, sing, and they celebrate her, you know, passing on into being a young woman. There's two links that goes with the diamond. There's the half diamond and there's the full diamond. So the diamond one is the one that is the very young one that is coming out of 
the house Mary, and the half diamond is the one that is accompanying them. So they will know, they put the focus on the diamond one, knowing that she's the one that they should be thinking about their, you know, son or something like that. So it, it's a different, a different story that align it together. So that's a design that hooks up the women rather than the men. So if you're a man running around with a diamond design, thank you, you you're supporting us, the women. <laughs> This is the spider belong. It talks about patience, talks about do not rush in things, and you, you just need to take time, be patient, and you complete one thing at a time. See, it starts from the pink, and then it goes round and round, so just like the web of the spider. So it connects the spider with uh, the weaver. There's this weaver that was teaching the daughter how to weave a belong. And as they were weaving the daughter, you know, she had to twist the fiber, learn how to twist the fiber, then she has to um, weave it. The daughter kind of like was tired and then she was like, she was very impatient. So she started, uh, you know, sitting down and she was looking around and then she saw the spider up there. And then she said, Mama, why can't we be like the spider and just finish it off? Just complete the pillow, hurry up and like, let's get it out of the way. But the mother got up and then, and then said, no, you cannot complete it in one day. The spider can complete the web in one day, but for you, you need to be patient and you need to complete it. It will take you weeks, days, months to complete it. It depends with, the, with your speed, but it is better to be patient and you need to know that you're, you know, man, you marry here. Line him low, walk him below. So that was how the spider web was created. The skin pick design is more like a trademark that we use as our story and it talks about who we are. It talks about women in a community or in a village, let's say in a village. The marginalized women and the women of higher status, when they say big mumu in a village, the people of higher status, they come in bringing the pigs and all this uh, for the party or for the mumu. While the women that are, let's just call it as women with no value, but are living in the village, they are old women, widows, women without uh, husbands, single mothers. In common, in Goroka language, we call it ghetto. So this kind of women, they're the ones that will bring in banana leaves for the mumu and there's these elephant grasses that we use to go around and cover the peat. Then they're the ones that peel the cow cows. They're the ones that fetch the water from the creek, bring it back for, to the mumu place. So the ghettos do that. The skin pig design is a story that talks about the ghettos. So when the pig is removed from the mumu, the heads and the arms and the legs and the backbone and the breast are given to people of higher status, leaving the greasy part of it that is attached to the skin and is laid down. So they they, they then get knives and then started cutting it up into square. They cut it up into square like this. They cut it up in square like this, and then they uh, give it to the, those ghetto weavers, uh, ghetto women. There's this one woman, uh, an old woman, uh, who is a widow who doesn't have a husband. And she was there, and then she was given the beat. Then she had the beat, and then she was sitting by a round house, the round hut, and she was sitting there. And she was watching all those people dancing and singing and celebrating. And she started singing and chanting, and she was saying like, oh, I really want to eat some meat, but I can't have that meat, you know, who will give it to me? I'm left. Yes, yeah, so I'm left with the crispy part of it, and um, I can't have that. So she was, you know, she was, it, in fact, she was so worried and she was singing and crying and, you know, telling them that like, I don't have my children, I don't have my husband to give me pig, but I mean, give me the meaty part of it. I have the greasy part that I will have to have. So she took that, I mean, she just sat there and she was chanting and singing. So that was how the skin pig design that was uh, created in Goroka. I'm, 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 I'm in that category, I, you know, I don't have my husband with me. And so it tells my story. I want to do something that will uh, support them. So that was where I created the design here and the skin pig design here. So it's very painful, but I had to bear with it so that we tell the story and it's more like a campaign against mistreating women, treating women like they are second class and all this. We all have to be the same and like even though we don't have a husband or we come from a, a poor family, we are widows or, and all this, we, we deserve a space in the society too. So that's how the skin pig design is taken forward by Goroka Bilum Weavers as our story about how our grandmothers, my aunties and you know like the old women back in my village are treated.
The mountain belongs, it tells the story of women that live in mountainous places that do their gardening and go to their, like, in Tokpit and House Peak. It's basically the route that the woman takes every day to go in uh, through the bushes to go and do the gardening, do their look after their livestock, fetch water. They live among mountains. So this old woman, you know, at one time sat there and then she could not climb the mountain anymore to go do her gardening. So she just sat there, looked at the mountain and then started, you know, singing and chanting and saying that, where else would I go to? This is my place. I belong to the mountain. So she started creating the mountain design to tell the story that that's her life that's where she belongs to and that's where she will live and she will die there when i left my husband i left everything and i walked out with only eight kina and i had little children who were basically small and i had that eight kina and then i had to think about feeding them and I, was, and I was ashamed to ask my family and friends to help me because already at the time I was popular being the Bill and Mary and then so I basically was like bankrupt and doing nothing so I I had to revisit the skill and the only skill I had was Bill and weaving uh, I didn't have any skill that can get me employed to do some work if I can do Bill and dresses and all these and Bill and, and then I'll do that I, I made my life through that. My journey started again. The women that I collect now and that work with me in the network are women who are marginalized. The community think that they have no value. The women, they think that they run around the streets and they are problem women and all this, but no. This woman, a real woman, because right now this woman are selling their billums, they're exporters, they're, they're taking care of their family, they're educating their children. They get the money from the billum, they're educating their children. They're paying for their health bills, medicine and their hospital. We work more like a pyramid now. And so one is employing another five, ten women again under their network to be billum with us. So every time when we want to sell, they come in with more billums because they have their own women that are working for them again. So if we look at our society today, it is more like we have the culture and tradition there and we have the Western influence there. So it's just the same as Belong. Belong, we weave all the designs together. We do weaving and looping. So we twist the fiber, we create a loop uh, that's from the weaving technique and we join the designs with the normal house and the paws and all this so it's weaving everything together to create something so if we look at that and if we look at our life now we we have to adapt into that have the traditional there and the western there so if we put them both together and blend it together and if we if we want to move forward we have to stand united together it's just like weaving the billum we create a bag from weaving together we start from the bottom we weave it all up together and we finally have a billum bag that can contain something in it so it's just like in a society today if we put the traditional and the cultural beliefs together and objects together and go work together with our modern society then we will create something that is, has got something in it, you see. It's a, it's, a, it's a nation that we will build, and as the saying goes, united we step, divided we fall.